Hi, welcome back to another pet and tutorial video. I hope you're keeping safe in these crazy times. Today, we'll be learning how to make McCall's M8032. I'll be making this dress in view C, which is a completely covered lace dress, and I've sewn it in Gapure lace. We'll be learning a lot of interesting sewing techniques such as how to overlap lace seams, how to use lace borders, and how to line lace. This dress looks totally glamorous and is suitable for all kinds of special occasions such as being a guest to a wedding, tea parties, or even just to wear for fun like I do. Let's get started. The pattern that we'll be using today is McCall's M8032, also known as Blythe. This is a classically fitted dress pattern. We'll be making View C, which is an overlay lace dress with ruffles at the neckline, sleeves and skirt. Today we'll be using beautiful Gapure lace, which is a very open network type of lace and it has a beautiful border. You can use any type of lace or sheer fabric and you'll need at least 2.2 meters. On the pattern the lace is known as the contrast. The main fabric of this dress is the layer underneath the lace. I'm making this in a matching pink cotton broadcloth. You'll need at least 2.1 meters of a cotton, satin, lame or poplin fabric. You'll need at least 0.7 meters of a lining such as a thin cotton, bimberg or poplin. I'm using a light volé and matching pink. I could have lined this dress in the main fabric, but this is easier for you to see in the video. You'll need matching thread. You'll need a matching 56cm zipper. This time we'll be using a normal dress zipper, which works slightly better with thick lace like this. And all the usual sewing supplies such as scissors, pins, needles, and iron and an ironing board. You'll need also tailor's chalk or an erasable fabric pen. To transfer the dart markings onto the fabric, I'm using a tracing wheel and carbon paper, which is the most reliable method. To make all the inside seam allowances beautiful, I'll be covering the seams with 2cm bias binding. You can buy a big roll of this from AliExpress. The top tab of the pattern has a sizing chart. Choose your size based off your bust and waist measurement. The skirt is free sized so you don't need your hip measurement. If you have issues fitting patterns then I suggest making a mock-up or twirl beforehand just with the bodice pieces. I ended up increasing the waist and biceps slightly to get a good fit. For this pattern you'll need to cut out all the pattern pieces, which are pieces 1 to 8. To cut out the pattern you need to follow the line for your size all the way around the outside of the pattern. Don't cut into the dart markings, which are the triangles on inside of the bodice front and back pieces. When it comes to the skirt pieces, don't cut along the cutting lines for the various views, just cut all the way around the piece. When you're cutting a lace garment like this, you'll need to plan out which pieces of the lace to use, since we have two lovely borders. This dress is a little easier to make because it's completely underlined. For this type of lace, the pattern looks best if you cut on the cross grain. This means for all the pieces that need to be cut, the grain lines must be perpendicular to the borders instead of parallel. Have a look at my video on how to sew border prints for a full explanation on how to cut on the cross grain. For each of these pieces, I'm going to make a cross grain arrow perpendicular to the normal straight grain arrow. I'm going to use the beautiful border print on the ruffles of the skirt, sleeves, and neckline. For each of these pieces, I won't be hemming the lace, so I'm going to make a line on the pattern to represent the hemline. For the sleeve and skirt ruffle, I'm making the line at 1.5cm. When I cut out the lace, I'm going to place the bottom of the border directly on top of this line to ensure the pieces have the correct length. 
The neckline ruffle is a little different. The instructions have this piece as a folded ruffle, but I want to make this piece with just a single layer of fabric, so I'm going to fold this piece along the fold line and place this directly on top of the border. My ruffle will therefore only have one layer of fabric, and I think this will look a lot neater. To prevent bulky seams, it's best to overlay the pieces on top of each other instead of making normal seams. Overlapped seams are perfect for lace because they don't need to be finished and the lace looks seamless if done right. I'm going to overlap the seams for all of the skirt side seams and the skirt and sleeve ruffle side seams. For each of these pieces, I'm going to mark the seam allowance at 1.5cm. When we cut out overlap seams, we need to leave the entire lace motif intact on the sides, which is what we will use to overlap. We will also need to tack in the seam allowance to help us piece the seams together. I have my lace all planned so I can go ahead and cut the pieces out. On your instruction sheet, you'll find the pattern layouts. These diagrams help you arrange the patterns on the fabric so you can cut out all the pieces with minimal wastage. Please note that when you're cutting this pattern, that the plain fabric that we're using as interlining is called the main fabric, and the lace is called the contrast. I'm going to start by cutting out the main fabric in pieces 1, 2, 4, 7, and 8. The first thing you need to do is fold the fabric in half widthwise, so that the salvages are together. Grab piece 8. This piece needs to be cut on the fold three times. The side of this piece of the rectangle arrow needs to be placed directly on top of the fold of the fabric. Pin into place. When cutting out pieces placed on the fold, you must not cut along the side with the fold marking. Repeat this three times. Unfold the fabric. Take one of the salvages and fold it widthwise just far enough so that you can place piece 7 on top. Use your measuring tape to measure the distance from the salvage to the fold. Now you need to make sure that the distance is same down the length of the fabric that we're going to cut for this piece. Pin this piece on top of the fold and cut it out. Move down the fabric and cut it two more times. Once again, make sure that the width is same down the length of the fabric that you need to cut. Place piece one on the fold and cut out. Now we'll cut out next to the other selvage. I'm going to fold my fabric lengthwise far enough so I can place piece 2 on top. The selvages should be pinned together. Place piece 2 in this leftover space. This piece has a grain line arrow. The length of this arrow needs to be parallel to the selvage. So use your measuring tape to make sure that the length between the arrow and the selvage is same down the length of the arrow. Pin and cut this piece out. In the leftover space, fold the salvage lengthwise. Place piece 4 on top. Align this piece of the salvage. Pin and cut this piece out. Moving on to cutting out the lace, which is a bit more complicated. We need to cut out piece 1 to 4 and 6 to 8. I won't be following the cutting layouts, instead I'm going to follow my plan for cutting lace. First thing I'm going to do is cut out all the pieces that need to be cut on the border. On the border, I'm going to fold over lengthwise enough of the fabric so I can place piece 8 on top with extra space. 
Now I'm going to place the line that I made for the hemline directly on top of the bottom of the border motif. I'm also placing the side on the fold. When I cut out the side seam of this ruffle, I want to keep all the motifs intact. Since this is two layers, I'm going to cut one at a time by placing a piece of paper between the pieces. I'm cutting all the lace that attaches to the motif that's under the side of the pattern. I'm going to cut straight across the top edge of the pattern. Grab some tacking thread if you have it. I'm going to fold the pattern piece along the line I made at 1.5cm. I'm then going to sew into the lace a thread next to the fold of the pattern. This will designate the seam line. I'm going to unpin the pattern so that I can pull away the first layer of the lace. Then I'll lay back the pattern down and repeat the process of tacking in the seam allowance. Cut out piece 8 in this manner two more times. Piece 3 needs to be placed on top of the folded border. I folded this piece in half and I'm going to place the piece on the top of the border and pin. I'm cutting out this piece on the fold and cutting out the whole motifs at the shortest edge. On the same border, I'm going to cut out piece 6. This piece doesn't need to be cut out on the fold. Again, line up the border with the hemline of this piece. Then I'm going to cut out the sides and leave the whole motifs. Again, I'm going to cut the top edge straight. Don't forget to sew in the tacking at the seam line. Move down the fabric and cut it two more times. The rest of the pieces will be cut out on the cross grain at the centre of the fabric. Fold over enough fabric lengthwise so you can place piece 7 on top. The border, or whatever you cut off from the border, should be together. Pin this piece to the fold. For the bottom and side of this piece, I'm going to cut the whole motifs. I'm going to cut the top of the piece even, then take in the seam line. Here's what the final product looks like. Repeat this two more times for piece 7. Pieces 2 and 4 need to be cut on two layers of fabric. Make sure that the cross grain arrow that you made is parallel to the border or what's left of it. Pin and cut these pieces out. Fold over the pieces lengthwise again. Pin piece 1 on top of the fold and cut this piece out. That's all for cutting the lace.
Lastly, we need to cut out the lining fabrics in pieces 1 and 2. Fold your lining widthwise and bring the salvages together. Place piece 1 on top of the fold and pin into place. Place piece 2 next to the salvage and pin. Cut these pieces out. All the pieces are cut, so let's prepare to sew. I'm going to make the markings for the dart in the bodice front and back. We need to do this before attaching the lace. For the bodice front, there are two darts on the side and two at the bottom. Pin the pattern to the fabric on the right side. Take your carbon paper and place it underneath your fabric. The die side of the carbon paper should be facing the wrong side of the fabric. Use your tracing wheel to roll over the line of the dart. Unpin the pattern and flip it over so that you can make the dart markings for the other half of the bodice front. On the wrong side of the fabric, you'll have the perfect dart lines. Lay out your bodice back pieces as well. You need to make the darts at the shoulder seam and the bottom of the bodice back. Once you're done with this piece, flip it over and make the dart markings on the other copy of the bodice back. Before I start sewing, I like to mark out all the dot markings with Taylor's chalk. This is important for sewing lace because you can't use Taylor's chalk on lace. Pin your pattern piece to one side of the bodice front. You need to transfer the circle marking in the middle of the neckline and the square marking at the bottom. Pin next to the marking. Fold the pattern piece on top of the marking. Use your Taylor's chalk to make a line from the marking to the raw edge. Flip the pattern piece over and repeat for the other half of the bodice front. For the bodice back, I'm going to transfer the small circle marking on the back of the neckline. Use the same method to transfer this marking on the wrong side of the fabric of both of the bodice back pieces. On the sleeves, I'm going to mark the three circle markings with my erasable fabric pen. This will give very accurate markings, but you must remember not to iron over them. Lastly, I'm going to transfer the large circle marking onto the lining of just one of the skirt pieces. Make this marking on the wrong side of the fabric. Let's merge the lace onto the main fabric. I'm going to base the lace pieces onto the bodice and sleeve pieces. You can go further and merge the skirt and ruffle pieces as well if you want to. Lay your main fabric with the right sides facing up. Place the lace pieces on top so that the wrong side is on top of the right side of the main fabric. The lace must be as smooth as possible. Pin around the outside of these two pieces. Do this for all the bodice and sleeve pieces. Change your stitch length to as long as possible. Sew around the outside of each piece at 1cm seam allowance. You will also need to base the lace on the inside of the dart as well to create a smooth appearance. Sew as close as possible to the dart lines that you made with carbon paper on the inside of the dart triangle. Do this for all of the darts on the bodice front and back. We're finally ready to sew the bodice. We're going to start by sewing the darts on the bodice front and the back pieces. To sew the darts, we need to fold it in half to bring the dart legs together. A quick way of doing this is to push a pin into one side of the dart and out through the other. The pins should be horizontal across the dart. Now fold the dart in half and use the pins to bring the lines of the dart together. Rearrange the pins so that they're lying flat on the fabric. Do this for all four darts on the bodice front 
and four more darts on the two copies of the bodice bag. To sew the darts, we need to sew on top of the dart line. Start at the base of the dart. When you reach the end of the dart, you may need to slightly change direction. The goal is for the last few stitches to be directly on top of the fold of the dart. When you reach the end of the dart, do not backstitch. Lift the foot up and pull the fabric out of the machine and cut a long tail of strings at the end of the dart. Knot the tip of the dart by hand, then cut the string short. Repeat for all of the darts on the bodice. Sew the darts for the bodice back as well. These darts are quite thick, so I recommend trimming it to about 1cm. The darts on the bottom of the bodice and the shoulder seam needs to be ironed towards the centre front or back. The bodice darts on the side seam needs to be ironed downwards. It's a good idea to baste over these darts once you've ironed them. This keeps them in place when you sew them later. Change your stitch leaf to the maximum and sew over the darts at 1cm seam allowance. Lay out your bodice front piece with the right side facing up. Place each of the bodice back pieces on top so that the right sides are together. Line up the sides and shoulder seams and pin. Match the notches for these side to help you line them up. Sew all four of these seams with a 1.5cm seam allowance. Iron the side seams and the shoulder seams split apart. To finish the edges, I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. Change your stitch settings to a medium length zigzag stitch and sew directly on top of the raw edge. This prevents the fabric from fraying. It's not the cleanest finish, but it's fine because this will be covered by lining. We'll now prepare the ruffle to attach to the neckline. I'm going to go ahead and gather the ruffle. Gathering lace like this is difficult because it's very thick and open spaces messes up the stitching. So here's what I suggest. Cut a piece of toilet paper to the length of your piece and pin it to the side that needs to be gathered. You can also use tissue paper but I didn't have access to that at the time of making this. Pin the paper to the right side of the lace. To make gathering stitches you need to increase the stitch length to the maximum on the straight stitch. Pull out long strings of thread from the machine before and after you sew. I'm starting and ending the gathering stitches on the tacking I made to represent the seam allowance of the ruffle. This will leave a little bit of ruffle to hang over the edge of the neckline. Sew at 1cm seam allowance. Do not backstitch when you sew gathering stitches for the start or end of the seam. Sew another round of gathering stitches at 2cm for the neckline ruffle. To gather the ruffle, you need to hold two threads, one from each of the gathering stitches, on the same side of the fabric. Pull these threads as you use your hand to hold the fabric. The fabric will start to gather underneath your fingers. Place the ruffle into the neckline with the right sides together. I'm placing the tacking on the neckline ruffle directly on top of the circle marking at the end of the neckline. This circle represents the center back for the neckline. Adjust the gathers so that the ruffle fits snugly over the top of the neckline. When you're happy, knot together each of the gathering threads. This will prevent the gathers from loosening. You can now even out the gathers over the entire ruffle by running your fingers over the top of them. Pin the ruffle to the neckline. Sew on top of the ruffle at 1cm seam allowance. This will keep the ruffle in place until it is properly sewn. 
Next, we'll be sewing the lining to cover the inside of the bodice. The lining needs to be sewn exactly the same as the bodice you've sewn so far, just without adding the lace. First off, use carbon paper to make the dark markings. Pin your pattern to the fabric and place the carbon paper underneath. Roll over the dark lines with your tracing wheel. Pin the dark lines together and sew on top of the dart line and don't backstitch at the end. Sew all the darts on the bodice front and back. Place the bodice front on top of your table with the right side facing up. Pin both copies of the bodice back to the bodice front at the shoulders and side seams. Sew these pieces together at one and a half centimeters. Finish the raw edges with a zigzag stitch and iron the seam split apart. At this point, I'm going to finish the raw edges of the center back and the bottom of the lining. Take your lining over to the ironing board. Use a tape measure to fold up the raw edge by one and a half centimeters on the wrong side of the lining. Use your iron to press the fold. We're ready to sew the bodice and lining together. We'll start by sewing these pieces together at the neckline. Place the lining on top of the main fabric with the right sides together. Pin all around the neckline. Sew the bodice and the lining together at one and a half centimeters. Sew the same seam again at 1.3 centimeters. This is the reinforcing seam to help support the curve and prevent fraying. Turn the lining the right side out. Use your quick unpick to carefully remove the gathering stitches on the neckline. At this point, you can rip off the taller paper used to gather the ruffle. Turn the lining the wrong way out. Trim the seam allowance to about half. To create a smooth curve, you need to remove the excess fabric by cutting notches into the seam allowance. We do this by cutting small triangles into the seam allowance. Cut up to the reinforcing seam, but not through it. Notches help relieve the tension in the seam when you turn it the right side out. We'll now understitch the neckline. This seam helps prevent the lining from showing when you wear the dress. To understitch, we need to sew the seam allowance of the neckline towards the lining side of the seam. Pin the seam allowance towards the lining for the entire neckline seam. We need to make it a marking at about 5 cm from the end of the neckline. When we understitch the neckline, you must start and end on these markings. The end of the neckline needs to be left open so that we can sew the zipper in. On your sewing machine, bring the flat seam under the foot. We'll start sewing on the chalk marking. Line up the foot so that you'll be sewing at about 5mm from the neckline seam on the lining side. Try to follow the curve of the lining to prevent tucks and to create an even seam. Check every so often to make sure that you're catching the neckline seam allowance in this seam. Stop sewing on top of the chalk marking at the end. Turn the bodice the right side out and iron the neckline flat. Bring the armholes together so that the wrong sides are facing. Pin the raw edges of the armhole together. We'll be basting these pieces together. You can increase the stitch length and unpick this seam later. Sew at about 1cm seam allowance for both of the armholes. Moving on to sewing the sleeves. We've previously marked the three circle markings on the cap of the sleeves. We're going to sew gathering stitches between these three markings. Use the same method as for the neckline ruffle. Increase your stitch length to the maximum and leave long tails of thread with no back stitching. Sew the gathering stitches at 1cm and 2cm seam allowance over the three circle markings. We won't be gathering the sleeves quite yet, so leave the gathering stitches for now. 
Bring the sides of the sleeves together. Match the notches and pin. Sew the side seam of the sleeves at 1.5cm. I've ironed the seam split apart. To finish the raw edges, I suggest using 2cm wide bias binding. Fold the bias binding over the top of the raw edge and pin. Cut the bias binding to match the length of the raw edge that needs to be covered. Sew on top of the bias binding. For me, this is a little less than 1cm seam allowance. This finish looks really neat and is my go-to for raw edges that are on the inside. Moving on to the sewing the ruffle. I'm not going to line my ruffle, so to make the lace look nice and seamless, I'm going to make an overlap seam. To do this, you must have the seam lines already tacked out. Take one end of the ruffle and lay it on the wrong side on top of the right end of the other. This will create a loop. You need to overlap the ends so that the tacking threads are directly on top of one another. Pin the lace into place. On our sewing machines, we need to change the stitch length to a wide zigzag stitch with a medium length. To keep these pieces of lace held together, we need to sew on top of the edge of the lace motifs. This stitching will catch the layers of lace underneath. Take your time to do this, especially if your lace has complicated motifs. You may need to stop and start the stitching on different motifs. You can go ahead and pull out the tacking stitches. Turn the ruffle the wrong side out. With your scissors, cut off the excess lace fabric on the under layer of the seam. As a rule, I try to cut off the excess motifs so that you can see through the motifs on the top layer. Don't cut through the stitching or too close so that the lace falls apart. The final result looks great. The lace seems to merge together at the seam. We'll now gather the lace ruffle onto the bottom of the sleeves. I'm using the same method of gathering lace as I did for the neck ruffle. I cut out a piece of taller paper to match the length of the sleeve ruffle. I then sewed the gathering stitches at 1cm and 2cm, leaving long strings of thread. I started and ended the gathering stitches on top of the side seam of the lace. Turn the ruffle the wrong way out. Take two of the thread tails from one side of the fabric, one from each row of the gathering stitches. Pull gently and the lace will start to gather under your fingers. Lightly gather the entire ruffle. Slip the ruffle over the top of the bottom of the sleeves. The top of the ruffle and the bottom of the sleeve should have the right sides together. Adjust the gathers so that the ruffles fit snugly over the top of the sleeve. Knot together each row of the gathering stitches. This will keep the ruffle the same length. Run your fingers over the top of the gathers to spread them out. Once you're done, put the ruffle back on top of the sleeve. Try to arrange the ruffle so that the side seams are aligned for the sleeve and the ruffle. Pin the ruffle into place. Remove the attachment from your machine to give you more space. Keep it off as you sew the sleeves. Sew the ruffle at 1.5cm seam allowance. Do this for both of the sleeves. I'm also going to sew bias binding over the top of the raw edge of this seam to make the sleeve look really neat on the inside. Sew on top of the fold of the bias binding. Press the seam allowance towards the main sleeve. To keep the seam allowance hidden, it's a good idea to top stitch the seam. Sew on top of the sleeve with just a few millimeters seam allowance to the ruffle seam. 
Moving on, we'll be sewing the sleeve to the bodice that we've made so far. Gather the cap of the sleeves. Normally we would only lightly gather the sleeves just to ease it into the armhole, but these sleeves are slightly puffed at the cap, so they need to be more heavily gathered. Turn your bodice the wrong way out. Bring the sleeve up to the armhole. Make sure that the big and small notches are matching for the armhole in the sleeve. We need to match the side seam of the armhole with the side seam of the bodice. Here's how to perfectly match the seams. Line up the seams that need to be matched. Make a marking at the seam at 1.5cm with tailor's chalk or an erasable fabric pen. Fold along this marking just on top of the top layer of the fabric. Move the top layer so that the seams match perfectly. Pin both layers together. Repeat this for the other sleeve. Sew over the seams at 1.5cm. Check how well the seams align. Adjust the gathers so that the sleeve fits snugly inside the armhole. Knot together the rows of gathering stitches and spread the gathers out. Take note that the middle circle on the cap of the sleeves needs to be aligned with the shoulder seam of the bodice. Pin the rest of the sleeve to the armhole. Sew the sleeves to the armholes at 1.5cm. Do this for both of the sleeves. Carefully pull out all gathering threads. I'm also going to cover the raw edge of the armhole seam with bias binding. Now we can finally start sewing the skirt. We'll be sewing the lace layer of the skirt first. For the side seams and the back seam of the skirt, I'll be making overlapped seams, starting with the back seam. I tacked two sides of the skirt pieces up until the circle marking on the center back. Overlay these pieces together so that the tacking overlaps. The right sides should be facing up. Sew on top of the motifs of the lace. Make sure that you keep track of where the tacking is and don't sew above the circle marking. We need to leave this open for the zipper. Now we need to sew the two side seams in the skirt. For each of these seams, I'll be making a full overlapped seam. Lay out the skirt pieces that you've sewn so far. Place another skirt panel on top with the right side also facing up. Pin and sew these overlapped seams. Do this for both of the side seams so that you create a full skirt. Cut off the excess lace and pull out the tacking threads. Make sure that you don't pull out the tacking thread at the bottom of the skirt. We'll be using this soon to sew the ruffle. Moving on to sewing the ruffle at the bottom of the skirt. There's three ruffle pieces for the bottom of the skirt. Since I used the border of the lace, there's no need to hem the ruffle. Take two of the ruffle pieces and create an overlapped seam at the side. The tacking threads need to be together and both pieces facing up. Sew on top of the motifs and trim off the excess lace. Take the last piece of the ruffle and sew it to the rest of the ruffles with two overlapped seams. This will create a loop. To this ruffle, I'm going to now pin toilet paper to the right side of the ruffle at the top edge. Sew gathering stitches at 1cm and 2cm between each of the ruffle seams. It's important that you use a contrasting colour to the toilet paper for the gathering stitches. You should have three sets of gathering stitches. Gather the ruffle lightly. To attach the ruffle to the bottom of the skirt, I'm going to overlay the bottom of the skirt on top of the ruffle. This will prevent a bulky seam which can be seen through the lace. 
Place your ruffle and skirt on the table with the right side facing up. Place the side seam of the skirt approximately on top of the side seam of the ruffle. Spread the ruffle so that the width is the same as the corresponding skirt panel on top. At this point, you can knot the rows of gathering stitches together to prevent the gathers from moving. To make the correct seam allowance, you need to make sure that the tacking for the skirt is precisely between the rows of gathering stitches. Pin into place. Pin the ruffle to the entire bottom of the skirt, matching the side seams approximately. Change your stitch length to a short but wide zigzag stitch. To make this seam, I'm going to zigzag stitch on top of the tacking thread that's on the bottom of the skirt. As I sew, I'm carefully making sure that this stitching is in between the rows of gathering stitches. Sew all around the bottom of the skirt. Once you're done, pull out all the gathering stitches and rip off the toilet paper. The ruffle looks really smooth and has an interesting detail of the extra motifs on the bottom of the skirt panel. You can go further and sew the motifs onto the ruffle, but I like how it looks here. Next, we'll sew the skirt lining. This follows the same process as for the lace skirt, except we'll be making the normal seams this time. We've already made the marking for the circle on the center back seam. Take two of your skirt pieces and place them right sides together and pin below the circle marking. Place these pieces back on the table with the right sides facing up. Place the last skirt piece right sides together on top of the other skirt pieces. Pin together. Sew together at 1.5cm for the full seam. Do this for both of the side seams of the skirt. With this lining, I'm going to have the right side facing outwards towards the lace. This will prevent the seam allowances from showing through the gaps in the lace. This means that the raw edges will be showing on the inside of the dress. I've ironed each of the side seams split apart, and I'm going to sew bias binding on each of the raw edges individually. I'm adding a ruffle to the bottom of the skirt lining as well. This one will be sewn the traditional way. Place two pieces of the ruffle right sides together and pin at the side seam. Sew together at 1.5cm seam allowance. Place the next ruffle piece on top, right sides together and pin. Sew again at 1.5cm seam allowance. So the last side seam of the ruffle to make a loop. I've ironed these side seams split apart and I'm going to sew bias binding on top of each of the raw edges. One thing to note is that you shouldn't sew the bias binding below the hem of the skirt. It will create unwanted bulk. So I'm going to make a marking at my hem allowance for the ruffle, which is two and a half centimeters. I'm going to cut off the bias binding at this point as I sew. Zigzag stitch on top of the bottom edge of the ruffle. Change your stitch length to a long stitch. We'll be gathering the top edge of this ruffle. Sew gathering stitches at 1cm and 2cm for the top edge of each section of the ruffle. Don't sew over the seam allowance for the ruffles. This is too thick and it will prevent the fabric from gathering properly. Take the ruffle over to the ironing board. Normally, the hem of this ruffle would be 1.5cm, but I want the lining ruffle to be slightly shorter than the lace of the skirt, so I'm going to use a hem allowance of 2.5cm or an inch. Fold up the bottom edge of the lining ruffle by 2.5cm on the wrong side using your measuring tape. Use your iron to press this hem. Now take the edge and fold it in half into the hem that you just made and iron. Pin into place. Back at your sewing machine, sew on top of the fold of the hem at about 1cm seam allowance. Lightly gather the ruffle. We won't be using this quite yet. 
time to bring together the two layers of the skirt. Lay out your skirt lining with the right side facing out. Pull the lace layer over the top. The wrong side of the lace should be facing the right side of the lining. Pin the two layers of the skirt together at the top edge and at the opening at the center back. Baste these pieces together at 1cm to keep them in place. Sew by spinning on top of the raw edges of the centre back seam. Do this individually and apply the bias binding on top of the lace. The top of the centre back seam will still be open for the zipper. Bring the ruffle over to your skirt. Place the top of the ruffle right sides together over the bottom of the skirt lining. Adjust the gathers so that the width of each section is the same as the section on the skirt. Knot the gathering threads together. Run your fingers over the top of the gathers to spread them evenly. We need to align each side seam on the ruffle with the same seam on the skirt. Use the same method as you did with the armhole. Make a marking at 1.5cm and use this to arrange the seam and pin. Sew over the seam at 1.5cm to check that the seams match perfectly. Pin the entire ruffle into place. Sew the ruffle to the skirt lining at 1.5cm. To get rid of some of the bulk, I trimmed the seam allowance of this seam to about half. I then sewed bias binding on top, starting and ending with the centre back seam. That's all for the skirt lining. We need to sew gathering stitches over the entire upper edge of the skirt. At each end of the top of the skirt, make a marking with your tailor's chalk at 1.5cm. Don't sew the gathering stitches beyond this point to keep it flat for when we sew the zipper. Once again, I'm going to sew gathering stitches between each of the skirt sections and not over the seam allowance of the skirt lining. Sew on the lining side of the skirt and don't forget to leave long tails for gathering threads. You should have two rows of gathering stitches on the free sections of the skirt. Pull two of the strings together to gather the skirt. We can finally attach the skirt and bodice together. Pull the lining out of the way because we'll be only sewing the lace and interlining. Now the bodice has a square marking on the bottom edge. This marking is actually where the side seam of the skirt needs to align up for the waist seam. So make sure that you have this marking on the front and back of your bodice. Pin the side seam of the skirt to this marking. Adjust the gathering stitches so that the width of the skirt panel is the same as the two square markings. Even out the gathers and pin. The right sides should be together, not the gathering threads together once you're done. Adjust the gathers so that the back section of the skirt is now the same width as the bodice, not the strings together. Repeat for the other end of the skirt. Take your dress over to the sewing machine and sew the waist seam at 1.5cm. Sew with the skirt side facing up. Pull out all of the gathering stitches in the skirt. Trim the seam allowance of the waist seam to about half. I like to also trim off as much as possible of the seam allowance at the end of the waist seam. This prevents too much bulkiness around the zipper when you sew it. 
zigzag stitch on top of the raw edge of the waist seam. Time to sew the zipper into the center back. I'm using a lapped zipper this time and I'm going to sew the zipper in the center of the seam. The first thing I'm going to do is match the waist seam at the center back. Make a marking at one and a half centimeters. Fold one layer and move it around to match it, then pin. Now pin together the entire center back raw edge as far as possible. This seam is only for the lace and interlining. Make sure you pull the lining out so that it won't be caught in the seam. Change your stitch setting to a long straight stitch. Base the center back seam at one and a half centimeters. Iron this seam flat so that the seam allowances are split apart. Now lay your dress inside out with the lining pulled out. Place a piece of cardboard inside the dress under the center back seam. Grab your matching zipper. What you need to do next is place the zipper directly under the basted center back seam. The side of the zipper with the head needs to be facing down onto the seam. Line up the top of the zipper with the neckline and pin. Now roll the zipper down onto the center back seam. The teeth of the zipper needs to line up with the seam precisely. Pin as you roll the zipper down. Back at the sewing machine, change to a zipper foot and keep the long stitch length. A contrasting stitch color makes this sewing easy to remove. Remove the attachment from the arm to give you more space. Baste on top of the zipper tape to hold the zipper down. This seam doesn't need to be too close to the zipper. Be very careful not to sew other parts of the dress in the seam. Do this for both sides of the zipper. Have a look at your work. The lace needs to be completely flat for this seam. If any of the lace is sticking up, you'll need to unpick and rebase the seam in that area. Make sure that your basting goes all the way up to the neckline. With your quick unpick, open up the center back seam for about 10 centimeters from the top. Pull the zipper down to this opening. Take your dress over to the sewing machine. You'll need to be using the normal stitch length and a matching thread. Pull the neckline through the arm of the machine. Line the foot up with the left side of the zipper at the neckline seam. The foot should slot nicely over the top of the zipper. Sew the zipper to the dress. When you approach the head of the zipper, push the needle into the fabric. Lift the sewing machine foot as high as possible. Use your other hand to zip up the zipper. Once the zipper is out of the way, you can put down the foot and start sewing again. Sew all the way down to the bottom of the zipper. Don't sew beyond the basting stitches. Push the needle into the fabric again. Lift the foot up and rotate the fabric so that you can sew directly over the top of the zipper. Put the foot down and sew for a few stitches until you reach the other side of the zipper. Push the needle into the fabric and make another right turn. Now sew from the bottom of the zipper to the top. When you have about an inch left to sew, pause and put the needle into the fabric. Once again, lift the foot as high as possible and push the zipper all the way down. Once the zipper is out of the way, you can sew all the way to the top of the neckline. Use your quick unpick to remove all the basting stitches. Unpick the center back seam. Zigzag stitch on top of the center back raw edge. The zipper looks great and runs really well. We're almost finished sewing this dress. It just needs a few finishing touches. We need to sew the bodice lining onto the main dress. Turn your dress inside out for easy access to the lining. Fold the lining over the top of the dress. I'm going to cut off the excess tape at the top of the zipper to help remove bulk. At the neckline, we need to fold the lining over the top of the zipper so that it can't be seen on the outside of the dress. The fold of the lining needs to be placed about 5mm from the zipper teeth. Pin into place. Pin the center back of the lining to the zipper until the waist. The bottom of the lining needs to be pinned to the waist seam of the dress. 
try to place the lining on top of the same seams as the main fabric of the bodice. Pin the entire lining to the dress. I'm going to hand sew the lining to the dress with a later stitch. Here's how to do it. Thread your needle with a double strand and knot. Push the needle into the fabric from under the zipper near the top of the zipper tape to hide the knot. We'll make the first stitch into the lining fabric. Push the needle into the fabric for about half a centimetre above where the food comes out of the zipper. Pull the needle through. Next stitch is made into the zipper tape. Straight under the last stitch, push the needle into the fabric for about half a centimetre away from the zipper teeth. Check on the right side of the fabric that you can't see the needle, then pull the needle through. Repeat this stitch onto the lining next. Repeat this pattern to sew the lining onto the zipper. Make sure that the stitching isn't showing on the right side of the dress as you sew. Sew down to the waist seam. Now we'll be using a ladder stitch to sew the lining onto the waist seam. I'm going to be sewing the lining directly onto the interlining so that it will cover the waist seam. As long as the needle goes through the fabric and not over the top of the lace, I can do this because the lace will cover up the stitching. You must be using a very well matching thread so the stitching can't be seen. Alternatively, you could just sew on top of the seam allowance. Hand sew the entire lining to the dress. To make a knot at the end, make a small stitch in the fabric which creates a loop. Pass the needle through the loop three times. Pull the needle and the loop will become a knot. Repeat once. The lining is now nicely sewn onto the dress. At the bottom of the zipper we have a bit of an opening left and the raw edge of the lace is showing. I will be hand sewing this with a later stitch. You should be able to fold under any raw edge of the lace into the skirt. Pin into place if you need to. Hide the knot into the wrong side of the fabric. I'm making small stitches with a later stitch that go through the lace and the skirt lining. When you reach the zipper, push the needle into the lining. On the other side of the skirt, bring through the needle and make a knot in the seam allowance. The dress is finally ready to wear. The lace looks so glamorous and smooth. The borders on the neck, sleeve and hem are a unique detail that helps the dress stand out. I'm really proud of how this dress turned out and I hope you'll copy these techniques for yourself. Thanks for watching this sewing tutorial video. Today we learned how to make a fully lined lace dress. It looks so glamorous and beautiful. We learned how to make lace overlap seams, how to gather lace, and also how to make ruffles. I hope you learned a little something from watching this video and please like and subscribe if so. Please share your creations on Instagram. Thanks for watching. I'll be showing you how to make McCall's M3 no, I didn't say it right. When we get a real cat, we can put a real cat on camera.